is for your feet and ankle mobility, getting those toes, those ankles, those feet to work a little bit better than maybe they have been. Because remember, every time we put our foot into any type of shoe, it's actually a cast, and that limits the ability for your foot and your toes to do its job, proper job. So we're gonna come into is Dandasana, seated staff pose. Definitely grab your blanket if you need it because it's all about taking care of your body in the most optimal way. And I want you to feel, even if you're on the blanket, I want you to feel your sit bones rooted into the earth. So wiggle side to side, feel those sit bones. And then yoga has a lot of shapes. So I want you to feel that L shape. So got a nice tall spine opening up the chest. We're gonna focus on the feet. So now draw the tops of the feet toward your head, toward your knees. Now try not to do this with your toes. There are, very, there are a lot of variations to play with, but for today, I just want you to focus on the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So try and keep the toes in line with the tops of the feet and kind of spreading apart. And you're just energetically drawing at the tops of the feet. The toes are gonna to come too, but I want you to think about that, ex that energy of coming forward. You can even pretend that your feet are pressing, the soles of the feet are pressing into a wall. Okay, so keep sitting up tall, stay with your breath, and now point the toes, plantar flex. And I want you to feel that stretch right across the ankle and the top of the foot and really reaching those toes forward and down. Your kneecaps are facing up, working on that tall spine. We're gonna do this a couple times. Dorsey flex the feet and plantar flex. And dorsey flex, plantar flex, dorsey flex, plantar flex. And one more, dorsey flex and plantar flex. And then just wiggle the legs out side to side. Now, I want you to pay attention. I'm always going to ask you to pay attention to how the movement feels, what action seems more available to you, and which side is more open, your right, your left. Is there an injury? Have you been walking for hours? You know, what is going on with your body right at this moment, okay? between the plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. Now we're gonna combine the two and add a few more, and there's gonna be other details in that. So you're gonna bring your legs wider apart, and I'll turn to face you as well so you can see. So you're gonna start with the legs wide into a straddle, and start with the feet dorsiflexed. Pivot the left foot in, and plantar flex, we're gonna draw a circle, and then circle around. Try and keep the kneecap facing the sky and try to only move the foot and the ankle, not your leg. So you can hold on to your kneecap and the shin and see if you can make the circle smooth versus bumpity or riggedy <laughs> and then reverse the circle. Keep sitting up tall circling around. And now let's do the right side. So now the foot dorsiflex, keep the left foot dorsiflexed, pivot the foot in, reach toward the floor and circle around. And just notice if you're feeling the smoothest, if it's different on this side, if it's more mobile or if it's tighter, one more circle in this direction and now reverse the circle. So pivot out to the side and around. And I really want you to feel that smoothness of the circle because what that's gonna do is further your range. Now I'm gonna turn forward just so you can see and come off the mat, just so you can see a little bit. So I'm gonna do them at the same time. So when you're pivoting the feet in, you're trying to reach the toes, touch the floor, and then circling around. And just notice, I like to do better by one at a time, just to fully concentrate, and then reverse the circles. And I am putting my palms on the kneecaps to really just pay attention to the ankles doing the movement with the feet, okay? And then just wiggle the legs in and out. All right, so now grab your strap and or whatever you have that you can use that's not stretchy 
and make sure you're using your blanket. We're coming back into Dadna Dasana, seated staff. We're going to go a little bit deeper just to get a little bit of the back body, but we're going to play with dorsiflexion. So you're going to take the strap and you can bend your knees if you need to, to get the strap to the balls of the feet. And what I always like to tell my students is that the closer your palm, your hand is to what you're working on, like to the foot, the more you're going to be able to work on that end range versus like trying to hold from here. So getting closer and, you know, working with the body as the whole. Okay. So my method, I just want you to think about everything is working together and you want to keep all body parts safe. So keep sitting up tall and maybe you're starting here and make sure that there's kind of the same amount of hang from each side. You can start with the elbows bent, but I do want you to think about a flat back starting to hinge from the hip joint. We're not going for the deepest fold. Now I'm going to walk my palms forward so you can see what that looks like. So dorsiflexing the feet, hinging from the hip, reaching the chest forward, bending the elbows. So elbows aren't out to the side. They are drawing toward the ribs, reaching the collarbone toward the front of the mat. And it's just getting into the, the, the whole back body. So the, the back muscles, the glutes, the hamstrings behind the back of the knee, the calves, the ankles, the Achilles, the soles of the feet. And just really just pressing into the strap, pulling with the strap. And this is why you wouldn't want something stretchy and then play with the dorsiflexion. See if you can line up the toes a little bit more, maybe you hinge a little bit more. And like I said, we're not going for the deepest fold and maybe you're feeling it a little bit less if you're on the blanket and that's okay. Now slowly come upright and take the strap to the side. Okay. Now. The way to come into this next pose, we're going to come into Virasana, hero pose. I like to get the calf muscle out of the way. It just, it just seems like an easier position to get into for the calf. And then I would invite you to try this. So come onto your hands and knees, plantar flex the feet. And now you're going to take your fingers and do one at a time. You're going to take your fingers to the back of the knee, press down on the calf, and then move the calf to the side and get the other one back of the knee move the calf other side sit down as you slide the fingers out and just check from side to side that all five toes are on the mat and that your your ankle is not i'm going to show you like this it's not rounding out to the side so you really and the best way to do that is just to make sure that the five toes are on the mat and actually as soon as i did that i felt it in my knee so we want to be just really cognizant of not sickling the ankle you're not weight bearing but it's still a good practice not to do so keep that in mind so check in with the toes and then just place your palms on the toes and just press down and just slide out so you can really feel that tactile feedback. There's sensory skin on the palms and on the feet. And it's just kind of nice to do, especially when we're always walking on our feet and having them do all kinds of crazy work for us. Okay. Now keeps it. We're going to come back to that. Keep sitting up tall. There is a modification I'm going to show you at the end. We're not going to stay here too long, but I just want you to explore how the ankles are feeling in this position, the tops of the feet, how your knees are feeling. Obviously, if it is intense, please come out of the position, come out of the pose, and I will show you the modification. So one last thing we're going to do here is you're going to take your palms, you're going to turn your thumbs out, Place your palms on the big toe and get a little bit of the little toe and just kind of press down onto the toes. So you're shifting back and forward, just giving your toes a little bit of pressure, but it's good pressure. It's just releasing those, those toes that get so much work and not much credit most of the time. So I just want you to really let the the toes release and you can even go to the ball of it. You can spend a lot of the time getting into the sole of the foot. Okay. Go for one more round. Okay. Now release and shift forward 
and shake out the feet, wiggle the feet. Now, before I show you the modification, we're gonna do the next pose. So now you're going to bring the legs closer together, plantar flex the feet, and sit on the heels into Vajrasana Thunderbolt or Diamond Pose. And again, you wanna think about that long spine. So draw the tailbone down a little bit and just notice how this feels on the tops of the feet and the ankles. Can you spread the toes? You want the toes facing back. How are your knees doing? And your breath, staying with your breath. Does your breath change? Does the cadence change? And can you just find this moment to really take care of getting into your ankles and your feet so you have a little bit more range and mobility? Relax the shoulders. Keep drawing the tailbone down. Okay, now we're going to shift forward lift the feet and roll out the ankles you can do one at a time in all different directions which i invite you to do i'm always going to invite you to be creative in your movement now for the modification you're going to take the block between the legs and sit on the block and just make sure that you're not falling off and then check in with the feet now this could be enough. Maybe you need two blocks or maybe you need a blanket and you can keep the blanket, you know, thick like this, or you can open it up and just place it across the top of the block and your feet. And it gives you, it feels nice. It gives you just a little bit more space. It's a little bit, it's a lot less pressure. So this is for hero pose, virasana. For sitting on when you're you're between the legs, sitting your butt down between the legs. But maybe when you're in Vajrasana, you're also having a lot of lot of tension and you're not quite near that with your ankle mobility. You can do this too with your feet and legs closer together. And I always invite you, your body is listening. And it's up to us to pay attention, because it's usually speaking very quietly until it's not. <laughs> Do what you need to do to make the adjustment so you can actually spend time taking care of your body in that position. Obviously, if there's pain, please come out. Okay, so I invite you to try this right now. If you have all the props, try this. Just experience how it feels. And I'm a, just a, such a big proponent of using props. They're such a great tool, but also trying, exploring, being curious what you need and what feels good that's going to give you more for your body going forward. Okay. You can take the props away and now we're going to get into another fun position for our feet and toes. You're going to curl your toes and sit back on your heels. Now the pinky toe happens to be like, I don't know, likes to run away sometimes. So you have to make sure from each side, that pinky toe is not flipping out to the side or flipping backwards while the other toes are facing forward. And again, drawing that tailbone down, keep the bottom ribs in and down just so you're not flaring the ribs, okay? So you wanna have that engagement in your trunk, okay? And then keep that long spine. You are weight bearing and this can be intense, I'm not gonna lie. When I first started this a long time ago, it was extremely painful and I could barely sit into it for one breath. This has progressed. So if you are feeling the sensation on the soles of your feet, I want you to really go inward and just stay with your breath. Try for a breath, try for three, see how long you can stay. No pressure to stay, but I do invite you to try it and experience it because what's happening is that it means your feet need this. They need this opening because like I said, footwear is like a cast. It really gets locks your foot and your toes into one position. And look at the shape of your footwear. It's gonna, it can turn to that. So just pay attention to that. If you're feeling the heat and the sensation, it's temporary and this is gonna really help you. So I invite you to continue trying. Okay, come forward and shake it out. We're going to go a little deeper with that in the last time. 
So you, instead of curling the toes, you're going to curl the toes in a plantar flex position. So we did like a dorsiflex position. Now you're going to come into, you're curling the toes backwards. Yeah, this is a lot more intense. <laughs> and sitting up tall, breathing into it, your weight bearing, and really feeling that stretch on the top of the toes. And if this is too much, you know, breathe through it. And at any point you always can come out, but I just want you to keep going with the experience the best you can. Relax the shoulders, draw the tailbone down, and go for one more breath. And now slowly shift forward and gently lift the toes and start to circle the, the ankle and then start to wiggle the toes. And then just go crazy and go in all different directions. Okay, now I'm gonna move back a little bit. So we're gonna do single leg and I'm gonna step my right foot forward and I just want you to pay attention to this. So the toes are facing left toes. My left toes are facing forward. I'm sitting on the heel. I'm going to slide my right foot back. I'm going to kind of hug my right leg and shift forward. So this is going to be like a two for one. So you're getting a calf stretch in this dorsiflex position on the right foot side. And then you're getting a nice sole of the foot stretch on the left side. We're going to go deeper, play with it, try and slide the knee forward and then add some weight of your upper body and see where you can go. Like my pinky toe is about to lift up. So this is my max. This is where I'm at. So you're really getting a stretch through here. You've lengthened the space between the foot, the toes and the knee. And then on the right side, you're getting a calf stretch. Slowly a stretch, ankle mobility, or strong dorsiflexion. And you want to keep your, your body is facing toward the short end of the mat. So there's no twisting, there's no rotation. Just breathing and holding in this position. Your upper body is your weight. And as you're in this position, go for one more breath. And I want you to think about driving your right heel through the floor. So you're really in a strong dorsiflexion, breathing into that position. Okay, now shift back and switch feet and legs. Okay, so right toes curled, make sure you got that pinky toe. Slide, <laughs> I can tell this side is already tighter, wow. Okay, now start to shift forward adding weight with the torso. And now I'm going to slide that right foot forward, right knee forward and adjust. Yeah. This side is completely different for me. Check it in for yourself. Stay with your breath. Your breath, as much as I talk about it, it's there to help you breathe through intense periods of a position. And you wouldn't go for a run or a swim without breathing. You would breathe. You wouldn't hold your breath. It's the same thing when you're in these positions. You just want to breathe fully and deeply as best you can. So not holding your breath. And then just maybe hold on to the elbows, add some more weight with your upper body. And remember there's no rotation. So you're just letting the hips and the shoulders face forward. And I'm just looking straight down to keep my neck in line, really driving this left heel through the floor. So I'm really feeling this stretch into the soleus, which is underneath the calf muscle. And go for one more breath. Okay, now release the palms and shift forward, bring the knee down and wiggle out the toes, the ankles, and just let them go in all kinds of crazy directions. Okay, come back onto your sit bones, stretch out the legs, bounce the knees up and down, and then wiggle the legs in and out, and just let it all release. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you have new, insight on your feet and your ankle mobility. 
Thank you for joining me. And I would love to know what insights you had and what you experienced from one side to the other and which pose was like, ah, that was amazing. Or, oh my God, I don't ever want to do that again. 